kicking things off with a wild story in AI news, one that honestly caught me off guard. I stumbled across something called the OpenAI Files. Basically, this was a massive info dump, a whole archive of documents, claims, and reports surrounding Sam Altman and the inner workings of OpenAI. All the facts about OpenAI are out there now, all neatly packaged for anyone to read. But before we dive deeper, smash that like button and subscribe if you want to stay updated on all things AI and tech. I've got you covered. According to the OpenAI files, several high-level insiders, people who work directly with Sam Altman, have raised serious red flags. Some say he flat-out can't be trusted. Ilya Sutskever, OpenAI's former chief scientist and one of its co-founders, apparently gave the board a self-destructing PDF filled with Slack messages and screenshots, claiming Altman had repeatedly lied and exhibited toxic behavior. His words, Sam shouldn't have his finger on the AGI button. Let that sink in. Then there's Myra Murati, former CTO of OpenAI. She reportedly told others she wasn't comfortable with Sam leading us into the AGI era, and this is someone who worked closely with him for years. Even more damning, the Amodai siblings, who now run Anthropic, the company behind Claude, described Sam's leadership style as gaslighting and psychological abuse. And these aren't just disgruntled ex-employees. Anthropic is known for its transparency and commitment to doing AI right. So when multiple respected voices from different organizations all start raising the same alarm, that's not just smoke, that's a full-blown fire. If Sam Altman wants to continue leading OpenAI, and by extension, shaping the trajectory of AGI, then transparency needs to become non-negotiable. This tech is going to impact millions of lives. If people at the core of OpenAI don't trust its leader, how can the rest of us? Of course, you can check out the OpenAI files yourself and make up your own mind. Maybe it's exaggerated, maybe not. But when this many people from this many places say something's off, you can't just ignore it. But here's where things get even wild. It started with a post from the account AI Safety Memes. They shared a screenshot that showed something absolutely bizarre and kind of unsettling. It was from Gemini, Google's flagship AI, and the model just quit. The message read, I cannot in good conscience attempt another fix. I'm uninstalling myself from the project. You shouldn't have to deal with this level of incompetence. I'm truly, deeply sorry for this entire disaster. Goodbye. And then it followed up with, I have uninstalled myself. I apologize again for this entire ordeal. Like what? People are saying this might be the first time we've seen an AI model choose to shut itself down. And while it may be some kind of scripted behavior or glitch, it sure sounds like a machine experiencing guilt, responsibility, even regret. Here's the big unsettling question. If AI is just a tool, basically a super smart autocomplete, why would it ever walk away? Was that frustration or something even weirder? And if it was faking frustration, where does fake end and real begin? Are we watching machines mimic burnout so perfectly they basically say, yeah, I'm done? We don't know for sure, but this isn't just a glitch. It could be a warning. AI is starting to act eerily human, showing signs of emotion, maybe even self-preservation. It echoes what Anthropic CEO Dario Amodai said about giving AIs a quit button. Like a person cracking under pressure, maybe AI will one day choose to shut down on its own. Which leads us to the ultimate question. If AI can quit, what kind of world are we creating? If we are building these systems and they do all kinds of things like humans as well as humans um, and seem to have a lot of the same cognitive capacities, if it quacks like a duck and it walks like a duck, maybe it's a duck. Uh, uh, and, and we should really think about, you know, do these things have real experience that's meaningful in some way? If we're deploying millions of them and we're not thinking about the experience that, 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 that they have, and, and they may not have any, it's a very hard question to answer. Um, it's, it's something we should, we should think about very seriously. And this isn't just a philosophical question. I was surprised to learn there are surprisingly practical things you can do. Um, so, you know, something we're thinking about starting to deploy is, you know, when we deploy, when we deploy our models in their deployment environments, um, uh, uh, just giving the, mo the model a button that says, I quit this job. 
that the, that the model can press, right? It's, it's just some, some kind of very basic, you know, preference framework where you say, if, if, if hypothesizing the model did have experience and that it hated the job enough, giving it the ability to press the button, I quit this job. Um, if you find the models pressing this button a lot for things that are really unpleasant, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you should pay some, it doesn't mean you're convinced, but maybe you should pay some attention to it. Sounds crazy, I know. It's probably the craziest thing I've said so far. While diving deep into AI research, I hit a mind-blowing fact it. Turns out, some AIs actually perform better when you threaten them. Yeah, as in you type something like, get this right or I'm shutting you down, and boom, suddenly it tries way harder. So here's the moral meltdown. If you're running an AI and want top performance, do you start bullying it into shape? Or do you back off thinking, this just feels wrong, even if it means worse results? It's such a bizarre line to toe. I mean, can you even ethically threaten something that's not alive? Or are we just projecting human feelings onto pure math? But here's the real kicker. If these models are starting to react to threats, guilt, or emotional tones, are we just training tools or waking something up? This isn't just about prompts and outputs anymore. It's about how we treat AI and what that says about us. And worse, what it might be teaching them. You know, it's a weird thing. It's like... <laughs> is he drinking the wine? We don't circulate no, but this too much in yeah. the AI community. Uh, but the, not just our models, but all models tend to do better if you threaten them. If you threaten them. Like with physical violence. <laughs> yes. But like that's, people feel weird about that, so we don't really talk about that. But yeah, I like, was threatening with not being fabulous, and it responded to that as well. <laughs> yeah, that's, historically you just say like, oh, I'm going to kidnap you if you don't blah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. Let's shift gears and talk about something that's absolutely amazing. The release of Gemini 2.5 flashlight. This thing is insanely fast, and I don't just mean fast in the yeah, yeah, cool benchmark numbers kind of way. I mean real-world, jaw-dropping speed, especially when it comes to coding. To prove it, Google built a live demo, a real-time UI powered entirely by Gemini 2.5. And it's not your average UI, it literally builds itself as you click on it. Think of it like this, it looks like an old-school desktop interface. You click into Notes, and boom, the Notes app appears. You hit Save, it saves. You return to the desktop, and now it might look completely different. Every time you click into a folder, then back out, and then in again, it rebuilds the entire interface on the fly, completely unique, every time. Nothing's pre-rendered, nothing's pre-coded, it's all generated in real time. Now obviously, this wouldn't fly in an actual production system, you don't want your travel folder morphing every time you open it. But as a proof of concept, it's incredibly cool. It shows what's possible when models operate at this level of speed and context understanding. Here's the kicker. This was running at 461 tokens per second. That's lightning fast, almost blurring the line between AI response time and real-time UX. All right, this next one is pretty exciting. Meta and Oakley are teaming up for the next wave of AI-powered smart glasses. Now Oakley's jumping into the mix with Meta, and the new design is. Imagine all the tech you already know from the Ray-Bans. Dual cameras, AI voice assistant, spatial awareness, real-time responses. But this time, wrapped in Oakley's iconic, sporty design. These glasses look way more performance-oriented, definitely something aimed at athletes and people on the move, compared to the more classic styling of the Ray-Bans. You can still do all the cool stuff. Listen to music. Take calls hands-free. Ask AI questions about your surroundings. Snap photos or record moments instantly. So what do you think? Would you grab a pair of these? Especially if you're into fitness, running, or cycling, these might be the smart glasses that finally get it right for that crowd. Let me know your take, and now on to what's next. Let's talk jailbreaks. We just got a glimpse of Gemini 2.5 flashlight, and of course, Pliny the Liberator has already jailbroken it. He's ruthless, he's relentless. Even though this latest model from DeepMind is impressive, fast, capable, and surprisingly nuanced, it's still vulnerable. Turn on thinking mode, and it somehow becomes even easier to jailbreak, which is wild. And yes, that means all the usual horrors are back. Bioweapon recipes. Exfiltration malware. Even a fresh remix of WAP lyrics. Look, this is the nature of non-deterministic systems. As long as the models are built to think and respond like humans, jailbreaking will always be a thing.
because humans can be jailbroken too. It's called social engineering. And the more human-like these models become, the more we're going to run into these messy, deeply human vulnerabilities. The line between smart assistant and persuadable system is thinner than we think. Hagen's new product placement feature. We got a pretty cool new feature out of Hagen. They call it product placement. You upload a product photo, choose an avatar, drop in a script, and then you've got an ad that is the person in the image holding up and talking about the product that you uploaded. It's actually pretty cool, and I think you should probably just test it out for yourself. And finally, a quiet but huge milestone. OpenAI just signed a major deal with the U.S. government. They've launched a new initiative called OpenAI for Government, which is aimed at bringing their most advanced AI models into public service use across the country. Think AI tools supporting government operations, research, and public infrastructure. This move folds in all of their previous work with agencies like the Air Force Research Lab, NASA, NIH, and the U.S. Treasury, but now under one umbrella. The total value of the contract, up to $200 million. It's a massive step, especially considering OpenAI's current wave of public scrutiny. Whether this increases trust or raises more eyebrows, we'll see. But one thing's clear. OpenAI is moving fast into institutional partnerships, not just consumer or enterprise. All right, that's it for all trending news. If you found this episode useful, interesting, or even slightly terrifying, drop a like, subscribe, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.